This is a good word for anybody who you've been, you've been dealing with depression, but you've been drinking to get through it. Now, depression is something that happens to a lot of us. I mean, I don't know anybody who hasn't had a season of darkness in their life. But if I try to drive out darkness with darkness, and I depend on something in the darkness that is going to make me addicted to something even when the light comes up, the second storm is worse than the first. Now, a lot of us are dealing with loneliness right now in this season. That's a storm that you can't always control. But if you run to places in the storm that are more dangerous than the storm itself, how many times have you, have you left a place that you didn't like? And the problem is you can't change if you never stay. Staying power. Staying power. One text message can change the next three years of your life in 80 characters out of nowhere. That's the first storm, the one you can't control. And you can't do anything about the current crossing, the current and the stormy conditions. I mean, some storms are just seasonal. Some storms can't be avoided. Don't create a second storm by your decisions. See, you can ask God to protect you in the first storm. God, I don't know what to do. You do. God, I can't do anything about this. You can. But what a lot of us have been doing in this season of uncertainty, we have been creating second storms that are worse than the first. I want to have a conversation with y'all about unapologetically getting rid of all things, people, and situations that no longer belong in the new season of your life. Some of y'all came up with New Year's resolutions. You've already fell apart. You've already fell apart. New Year's resolution, Happy New Year. It's supposed to be Happy New You Year. All of your bad habits, surroundings, and situations, personal relationships that didn't make sense for your life back then. You're supposed to step into the Happy New You Year. So many of y'all are mental and spiritual psychological warfare so many of y'all are in spiritual chains you are spiritually behind all this. you are stuck you are institutionalized most of us have two eyes and we still can't see can't clearly see all of the, the scams the people's motives God sends us bold signs and wonders and tells us to change our environment and our surroundings so that we can reach the ultimate level of being blessed. I really think that if you get rid of the trash in your life, that can be people, business, and situations, you too could really, like I really believe that you can reach your full potential. I want you to fly. I want you and your career and your financial blessings to bypass me. Sometimes in order to get to better, you have to go backwards. Sometimes in order to get to better, you have to go through bad. And I'm preaching this for somebody today who has been feeling like things have been going backwards for you. The thing about it is, when God shows you a new grip called grace, for a little while in your life, it's harder for you because you're used to controlling things. Have you ever noticed, if you get something new, even if it's better, at first it gets on your nerves because you don't know how to use it? And the temptation for us is, watch this, God will do a new thing in our life, and He'll be teaching us to forgive, and He'll be teaching us to get over offenses and he'll be teaching us to trust him and he'll be teaching us not to live by our feelings but then we look at what he fixed on our grip and we see our shot going so far over the fence and I wonder if I would actually be better off doing it the old way than the new way so I go back instead of moving forward into better when you get uncomfortable you stop believing that when you get depressed you stop believing that. You start trying to grip life like you used to. We got to go backwards to get better. We got to go all the way back to get better. That means I have to be comfortable in some seasons of my life. I have to be comfortable in my life to accept that sometimes loss is the way to gain. 
I have to be comfortable enough in my life to know that sometimes the most painful moments are the most purposeful moments. I have to be comfortable in my life to stop comparing myself so much with people who are not meant to be the standard anyway. You may have a good reason to worry about something. In your health, your finances, a dream, you've done everything you can, doesn't look like it's going to work out, stay in faith. It's just a matter of time before you see things change in your favor. Now live out of a place of peace, a place of trust. It may not happen the way you thought, but God's ways are better than our ways. God knows what's best for you. He's got this. You got a problem? It's called anxiety. Here's the solution. It's called prayer. What's the result of prayer? Peace. Maybe you're like, Rich, okay, but you don't understand. You don't know my story. You don't know about my life right now. I ain't got no time for peace. You never met my boss. Can't get no peace over there. You don't know my husband. Ain't no peace in my home. You don't know my situation. You would be absolutely correct, absolutely right. I don't know all of those factors and all of those variables, yet I'm not sure if you're listening to me tonight. What the scripture says is that when we go to God in prayer, what happens is that we don't get man's peace, we get the peace of God. The peace of God is interesting because the peace of God transcends all understanding. Meaning that God's peace is superior to your earthly situation. God's peace is illogical. So if you have a situation that doesn't make sense, good news, your God has peace that doesn't make sense. Listen, your situation might not change, but your soul will. When what you were guiding by goes away, and every day just looks the same and feels the same. Now I get the feeling like this is endless. Now I get the feeling like maybe these chains are never going to break. This storm is never going to cease. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. Who you listen to determines where you end up. Because I think right now you are walking through a valley between two voices. One is wisdom, one is worry. One is gratitude, one is grumbling. One is blame, one is faith. Wait a minute. The opposite of faith is doubt. No, 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 no. Doubt doesn't keep you from having faith. Doubt gives you something to have faith for. But blame will block faith every time. Blame will always block faith. A subject that altered my life forever. It was just unbelievable. I hadn't known my mentor, Mr. Show, very long until one day he said, Mr. Owens, let me see your current list of goals. He said, I've had a lot of experience and I've been out here for a while. And he said, let's go over them and maybe I can really give you some good ideas. And I said, I don't have a list. He said, well, he said, if you don't have a list of your goals, he said, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. That got my attention. I said, do you mean my bank balance would be a lot bigger if I learned how to set goals? He said, drastically bigger. That got my attention, so I finally said, hey, I want to learn how to set goals. It is a fantastic skill to develop how to design your own future. So make the note, life best lived is life by design, not by accident. Not just, you know, walking through the day, careening from wall to wall and managing to survive. You know, that's okay. But if you can start giving your life dimensions and design and color and objectives and purpose, the results can be absolutely staggering. Key phrase, here's a chance now to use your imagination. Because the imagination builds cities, imagination conquers disease, imagination develops a career. Imagination sets up a relationship. Imagination is where all tangible values and intangible values begin in the imagination. So what you've got to learn to do is use this powerful resource. Now sometimes all by ourselves, it's a little difficult sort of to get it going. That's why a little workshop like we're going to do today is sometimes very helpful. When someone does a little coaching and says, how about 
this, this niche is I never thought about that. That ought to be easy to do. And the first thing you know, you're going. And uh, that's why that is so important. But now, tapping this resource of the imagination and thinking about your future, thinking about tomorrow, as early as tomorrow or the rest of the day, and thinking on out the rest of the year, on into the next century, on into the early years of the next century. A workshop like we're about to do helps call your attention to that so you can use your imagination to start prospecting for the future, what could be possible for you. We're affected by our dreams, our vision of the future. You want to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people live in the past and let their life be continually pulled and influenced by the past. And yes, we must remember the past and review the past to make it useful to invest in the future. But here's the key. Make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Now, if you're skimpy on your dreams, if you're skimpy on your objectives and your purposes, if that isn't very well planned, then it doesn't pull very hard. Then you have more of a tendency to be pulled by the past or to be pulled apart by events or circumstances or to be pulled apart by distractions. So in order to save yourself from being pulled apart by distractions or pulled back to the past, you want to now start really designing the future so that the greatest part of your attention and focus and pull, like a magnet, pulls you forward into the future to accomplish your goals. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. Yeah. Got to have dirt put on top of it. In my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though, see, dirt is necessary for growth and development. Dirt builds character. Dirt gives you the push-through factor. Dirt makes you come with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't gonna make it. That Everybody get dirt put on them. But see, when you're getting put under that stress, please know God is always working, so I smile. Because I know he back there. See, that dirt builds character in you. When they talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. See, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. Because, see, soil has nutrients in it. What the nutrients, when people talking about you, dogging you, lying on you, backbiting, stealing from you, they're actually putting nutrients in you. They're building character. You got character now. And now, the dirt is necessary so you can prove yourself. Everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. But if you're weak in learning to set goals, if you haven't really worked on this that we're going to work on, then that is a solution you need to consider. Goals are like a magnet. They pull, and the stronger they are, and the more purposeful they are, the bigger they are, the more unique they are, the stronger they pull. If you have excellent goals and high dreams, here's what they also do. They pull you through, pull you through all kinds of down days, down seasons. They pull you through a winter of discontent. They pull you through distraction on every side that says, look here, look here, look here. Strong, powerful dreams like a magnet pull you through that. Strong dreams and goals pull you through a disaster. Some people get swallowed by the disaster because they have nothing on the other side of the disaster to pull them through. A bad day can almost overwhelm you if you don't have something really purposeful to go for at the other side of that day, at the other side of the difficult time, at the other side of the down time. If you've got plenty out there to attract and pull, it'll pull you through all these things. And very little of it will attach itself to you. You'll be able to get through some of the most difficult times if you have this spectacular vision ahead of you of where you're going and what you're going to accomplish. Getting through will be easy or easier. So learning to set goals, it is an incredible experience. Once I learned it, it transformed my life forever. Being here today is an accomplishment of my goals. 
when I travel around the world, sit on an airplane, I say, I dreamed about this one day. I used to go to the airport and watch the planes fly away, and I said, one of these days, I'll be on one of those planes. I dreamed about it. I dreamed about the other side of the world. I'd never been to Italy, but I dreamed about it. I'd never been to South Africa, but I dreamed about it. Sure enough, step by step and country by country and flight by flight, I started checking them off my list. It was the most exhilarating feeling. Powerful. To set those goals, reach out there into the future, design something to the best of your ability, refine it as you go, tear it up periodically if you want to, set a whole new list. It's your life, it's your future. But now I would like to do it in a very simple, easy manner that you can follow so that you can use it for the future to pass on to your children, or if you've got a little group that you train and teach, or your management and salespeople, you can use this with others. So what I'm gonna go through with you here is sort of a model. Sort of, if I rush you just a little bit on getting through this model, at least I will leave you with the model that you can use later. And not only use later, but use later to pass on to someone else in some manner. So having laid this background now, here's what I want you to do. get a fresh piece of paper and this is called now the workshop and on this workshop now I want you to write down the question and then do the exercise first question list what five things have you accomplished that you're already proud of what five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of now, primarily what this is for is to, you know, give you credit for what you've already accomplished. Shelf said to me, Mr. Owen, you've already been setting goals. You know, you've already gone for something and you've achieved it. But you've probably done it haphazardly. You haven't done it with a real plan in mind. And you've accomplished some things. Now, if you start deliberately doing it, can you imagine how you can multiply the effect by 5, by 10, by 20, by 100? I finally got the message. So, first of all, you wanted to make sure I got credit for the things that I had already accomplished, especially in my own mind. You know, whether it's an accomplishment to someone else doesn't matter now, just so you recognize it for yourself. Now that you've done that little workshop, here's the second question. This is gonna take some time now. What do you want in the next 10 years? What do you want in the next 10 years? Now, under this, what do you want in the next 10 years? That is the question. I want you to make a list of at least 50 items. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just write as fast as you can. Don't give any much detailed thought to it of what you want in the next 10 years. And just let your mind run free. Now, also remember this. This is not what you think you can get. This is what you want. If it all fell into place and you could have everything you wanted in the next 10 years, what would you take? If somebody promised you can have anything you want in the next 10 years, what do you want? I want you to approach it that way because it's not important to think, what do I think I can get? I want you to now think about what you want in the next 10 years and put them one under the other, not side by side, but one under the other because we're going to do something with this list when you finish. You don't have to just be shortchanged on this list. I mean, this list can go on and on and on. And if you're working this workshop and you've got plenty of time, you just, you know, give it plenty of time until everybody's pretty thoroughly, you know, ready now with this list. But now here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to go through the list now, one item at a time, write down the list. And I want you to give each item a one, a three, a five, or a 10 by saying, that's about a one year goal, that's about a three, that's about a five, that's about a 10. I want you to look at each item, write down the list, and give it a one, three, five, or 10. Now, here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to look at each item that you've numbered number one, and I want you to pick out the four most important and identify them somewhere. Either make a new list of the four most important one-year goals or circle them or put a star or something beside it. What are your four most important one-year goals? Now that you picked the four most important one-year goals, here's the next question. Why? Why are those four goals important to you? What are they going to do for you? What will they accomplish? Why did you pick those? Why? Why are those goals important? Just three or four sentences. If we don't have time to complete it, you can complete it later. If you have plenty of time doing this workshop, you just take the time. 
why are those four goals important to you? Okay, put a little star there now that those little stars mean finish later. Okay, because you can continue on with this, you know, after, long after this workshop is finished and then use it as a model to teach. Remember, study, practice, teach. Now, make these notes. Next, when the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When people don't have strong, powerful goals, the how is almost impossible. The how is too difficult. How to do it seems like, you know, how can I ever accomplish this? The how starts getting easier and easier when the why gets bigger and bigger and stronger. Now make this note. Purpose is stronger than object. Purpose is stronger than object. Object can be powerful, object can be strong, but purpose is stronger than object. One of your objectives might have been a million dollar home to live in. Here's the big question, what for? And it's the what for that pulls stronger than the million dollar home. You know, a home is a home is a home. What for? What are, you, what are you gonna do with this place? Well, now we start with the details. And I want you to add this note. It works in communication and it works here too. The drama is in the details. The drama is in the details. Someone says, I've lost uh, 40 pounds in the last three months. We say, is that it? Those are the numbers, but what's the detail? How did you feel before? Well, let me tell you what. Now they start the drama by giving us the details. How do you feel now? Wow, what a difference, 40 pounds later. And this person starts to describe what it's like now versus what it was like before. The drama is in the details. This is what you've got to do. A million dollar home, what for? So everybody can see it from the street? That's okay, but there's got to be some more reasons. What, you, what do you want to do with this home? Then you start to say, hey, it's going to be the center of activity. You can't believe what's going to go on in this home. And you just keep describing it. And that drama now starts to really tap your imagination. And imagination is the beginning of reality. You can't imagine how close imagination is to reality until you start practicing this craft of turning nothing into something, imagination into tangible, the real stuff. How close is the real stuff? You can't imagine how close. If you start tapping into this resource of your imagination so that your purpose becomes much stronger than the object. The object is powerful and it'll pull, but the purpose is unbelievable. We must all pay the price, but the price gets easy if the prize gets large. The price gets easy if the prize gets sufficient. It's like disciplines. What a small price to pay for good health. What an easy thing to do an apple a day. I mean, a few things gives you such an incredible return that the price almost disappears. Promise is stronger than object. You got that? The bigger and the more powerful the why, the how gets easier and easier and easier. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. I want you to understand that haters have a job to do. You have hate and you have love. Never give a hater a stage to stand on because they want nothing more than to be negative or do something negative and then have everybody give them attention about it. Think about how far a hater will go. I've learned that insecure people will go above and beyond to create insecurities. Hurt people will go above and beyond to hurt people. Misery loves company, but people go so far. When you're miserable and you're a negative person, you go very far 
to create misery and negativity in other people's lives. So I've learned to laugh. Some of it doesn't feel good to receive it, but I've learned to laugh at it because you understand that people have a job to do. Haters, being a hater is a full-time job. Being a miserable person who has a job to create misery for other people's lives is a full-time job. I mean, who wants to be unemployed? There are some folks in it that will just hate you because God likes you. You don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to mess up anything. You don't have to start a fight. They don't even have to know you. Most of my haters have never met me. I couldn't have done nothing to you because I don't even know you. How you gonna hate me if you don't even know me? Give me a chance to earn your hate. I just want to talk to you about haters for a second, because we all got them. Everybody got haters. I ain't even know I had these many haters. Till I go on the internet, there they are. They just waiting on me. They don't even know me. They don't know you. They just be saying stuff. You don't even know where it come from. That's why we have good and we have evil. And at the same time, what I have an appreciation of is if you're online or if you run into somebody and they just so happens to be a hater and they end up saying something to you that will actually change your life and make you a better person. You may not like the way they're saying it, but if they're saying something that's the truth that could actually impact you and make a difference, then you're supposed to remain a student of life to learn, even if what you're learning is coming from a hater. Take the lesson from it. Grow, mature, understand it, process, and then make the adjustments, and then you keep it moving. Understand that haters have a job to do. Process it, understand it. It balances our world. I want to say how much I appreciate you because you hated me on a level that I didn't even know I was on. And you hated me so long that I had to go back and stare at myself to see what you saw in me that made you hate me that bad. And I started discovering who I was because you changed my perception. To everyone who is watching this video no matter what you are doing to achieve a goal or to accomplish a mission or to improve yourself or change for the good for yourself and you want to see changes in your life despite of any one of those things that you are focusing on doing you have to understand something there are always going to be a certain group of people who are going to hate on you for no apparent reason but it's going to be dependent on how you respond to it and react to it. You can either react by allowing the negative words of those haters based on what they have said consume you and to let it rule over you and allow the voices of those negative words to get into you and then to the point of defeating that you cannot do it or you can ignore and don't be bothered with it and then stay focused on what you are doing. Have a plan to improvise and then adapt and then overcome in order to accomplish whatever that you are focused on for the good for yourself. If we talk about getting set and free from sin and shame, we need to get set free from people. Not that we don't care about them, but we can't be controlled by them. If you have a certain group of people who are hating on you for no apparent reason, they're sitting there saying, you can't do this, you can't do that, you cannot accomplish this, you're not able or capable of doing that. That ain't going to never happen into your life for the good. The first thing you need to do is ignore what they said and don't be bothered with it. And then in the midst of it, while these people are saying all of that jibber jabber and stuff, do not argue with them. Focus and work and move in silence behind closed doors. That's what you need to do.
There is no worse feeling than that of invisibility. You know, when you are doing your very best and it goes unrecognized, it makes it kind of harder to want to keep doing it. And when you feel unseen, especially by the people whose attention and approval you crave the most, it can create a compulsion in your life to start doing things that are not even really consistent with your character in order to receive from people a confirmation that can be taken away just as easily as it was given. So my message is, if you have felt unnoticed, unappreciated, uncelebrated, and insignificant in this kingdom, what is unseen is often what is most significant. We must drive the dark side of our nature into a small corner and let the positive side flourish. Early we must learn to exercise self-control. Power is a wonderful thing, but it must be exercised properly to benefit, not to destruction. So self-control is certainly necessary to be a strong leader so that you can become the best example. The example of having your temper well managed, having that dark side of your nature under control. The best example of choosing wise words and not being careless, that kind of control. Control of your desires so that they fit into the positive side of life and not the negative side. Self-control, very important. When you decide I have had enough, a leader is about to be born. Toleration is the graveyard of leaders. And that's why we lack leadership. Everybody wants to be liked. Nobody wants to shrug the boat. And that's why we're not leaders, because we want everyone to agree with us. We still apologize for being successful. We feel ashamed to be in charge. When you still carry your history, you are afraid of success. Because you may lose your friends who ain't going nowhere. Very subtle problems. Your attitude is so powerful, it creates your atmosphere. It also is a source of your natural lifestyle. And if you're going to change your life, you've got to change your attitude. Now here's the bottom line. Your belief system is the source of your attitude. A leader must have, Napoleon said, a mastery of the details. All can be lost with just a couple of missing details. On the trip to the moon, everything has to work. There's a thousand, several thousand moving parts, and several thousand pieces to the project of getting to the moon and coming back, and all of them have to work. And then there's the backup systems for something if something goes wrong and back it up. That kind of mastery of detail is so vitally important. The drama is in the details. Master the details. Good advice, Napoleon Hill. Willingness to assume full responsibility. What happened to me might not have been my responsibility, but what I do about it is my full responsibility. If a hailstorm destroys the farmer's crop, he wasn't responsible for that. But his responsibility now begins when the hailstorm is over, when he asks the question of himself, what should I do now? Wherever you are in the world, just do me a favor and share this video. Because just maybe somebody is at home stressed, depressed, frustrated, miserable because they're on the receiving end of hate. When you guys could make a difference in somebody's out there life. Understand, they have a job to do. Look for the lesson in the hate. Learn from it, grow from it, mature from it, process it, and then you keep it moving. Self-preparation. Be ready for tomorrow by doing all that you can today, setting your goals. Set a goal that will make you stretch for what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all-encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future, to see what it will make of you to achieve it. And here's why. The greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. The major question to ask on the job is not, what am I getting here? The major question to ask is, what am I becoming here?
It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. So there you have the two components of positive self-direction. Number one, self-knowledge. Knowing who you are, and what you want to do with your life. And number two, self-preparation. Getting ready for the opportunities before they come your way. You need both aspects for positive self-direction. Figuring out who you are and what you want. And being prepared for the day you reach your goals. Being ready. Being worthy. Becoming the person you need to be in pursuit of what you want. What good is an opportunity if you're not prepared to take advantage of it? It's no good. Won't do a thing for you. Be prepared. Now here's what's called the self-knowledge asset test. Quickly, without thinking too much about it, quickly list your three most important long-term work-related goals. Is it a client you've been trying to sign for several months? Is it a major sale you've been trying to make? Is it a promotion? Is it a partnership in the firm? Quickly list your three most important long-term work-related goals. Achievements that you want to make. Achievements that will take a while to get. Write them down. Again, without thinking too much about it, quickly list your three most important personal and spiritual goals. Things that will make a difference in your personal life. Is it going to church more often than holidays? Grasping all you can from the Sunday sermon? Is it spending more quality time with your kids? Is it turning the TV off during the dinner hour and actually talking about the important things in life with your family? Is it making more dates with your spouse? Is it planning a much needed family vacation? What is it? What are the important goals in your personal and spiritual life? Is one of them making a conscious effort to exercise more, to eat better, to lose some weight, to get in shape? What are the three most important personal and spiritual goals that you have? Write them down. Doesn't matter what they are, just write them down. Now, take some time to really visualize what the achievement of these goals would look like. What does your future hold for you if you landed that big client? What does your future look like if you got that promotion? If you spent more time with your family? If you planned more outings with your spouse? What does your future look like? Really spend some time on this now. It's important stuff. What does it all look like? Ask yourself, is this really my goal? Is this truly what I want? Is it a positive goal? Is it important enough to me to become what it takes to reach this goal? Is it mine? Is it worth it? If your three goals on the career side and three goals on the personal side don't stand up to these questions, you need to take some time to carefully redefine a few things. Redefine your list. Redefine where it is that these goals came from. Redefine what actually is important to you. Redefine how hard you'll really work to get them. Now, there are two parts to this goal setting and redefining process. There's two parts. Number one, don't set your goals too low. An interesting thing that we teach in leadership, don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure is on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. Now here's the second part on setting goals. Number one is don't set your goals too low. Number two is don't compromise. Don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd known back then how much it was going to cost me, I never would have gone for them. But I didn't know. Don't sell out. An ancient phrase says, count the cost. Count the cost if it won't make you happy to get it. If you become less in your pursuit of getting it, if it's not worth the life you'll lead after you get it, 
It's not worth it. Now let's talk a little more about self-preparation. Self-preparation has two benefits. The first benefit of self-preparation is that it moves you toward your goal. You've already got it in mind. You know where you want to go. You're getting ready for it. You're doing all the things you're supposed to do. And by getting ready to achieve your goals, you're moving closer to your goals. That's how it works. The second major benefit to self-preparation is that it refuels your ambition. Your activity refuels your ambition. The things that you are doing today are getting you ready for tomorrow. It's exciting. You know that you're getting closer every day. Ambition must be kept alive, be kept active, must continue to move forward. Otherwise, you're just daydreaming. You must keep active, keep moving forward so your ambition can fuel you, motivate you, get you where you want to be. Self-preparation. The benefits are, number one, it moves you toward your goals, and number two, it refuels your ambition. Be prepared. Get ready. This method of self-preparation involves three steps. Step one. Carefully consider where the next opportunity for reaching your goal will originate. Where will it come from? Will it come from networking with your colleagues? Will it come from reading the last book that you bought? The book that's still sitting on your shelf waiting to give you some answers? Will it come from you taking the time to think it out? Where will it come from? The next opportunity that will push you forward. If you don't know, Here's what you have to do. For each major goal of yours, the top priorities on your list, for each of these, take out a separate piece of paper, one single sheet per major goal, write down your goal at the top and start listing all reasonable resources. Write down every possible place that you could find the opportunity to achieve this goal. And with each resource, classify them. Ask yourself, is this resource a sure thing? A good bet? About even chances? Unlikely? A long shot? Ask yourself these questions and classify all of the resources you have written down. That's the first step. The second step in this method of self-preparation is to make sure you know what you need to do to be prepared for your opportunity. Take your sure things first. Figure out what you need to do to be prepared when they happen. Break down your preparation into concrete steps. Make sure that you know exactly what you have to do to take advantage of the opportunity when it comes your way. Let's say that one of the top priorities on your career list of goals is to get this new client. Let's take it one step further to say that on your resource list for this goal, is to have a lunch meeting with a friend who just happens to be the mentor of the client you're going after. Is this friend of yours a sure bet on your resource list? Well, let's say he is. I mean, you know this guy is a tremendous consulting source for the client you want. The client you want really listens to the opinions and advice of your friend. So you're getting ready to have lunch with your friend. What do you do? You've got to make sure that you're up on all the knowledge and the industry data that will impress your friend. Make him realize that he knows someone who could benefit from your knowledge and your vitality and your spirit and your experience. Impress him. Impress him so much that he goes back to his friend, the client you're after, and tells this prospective client of yours that he needs to do business with you. Be prepared. Go through your entire list of goals and resources and classify them. Break each resource into concrete steps of preparation. Start by working on the sure bets first and then move down the line. The long shots will come through every so often, but start with the resources that will serve you best now. Get ready for the opportunities before they come your way. Step three in the self-preparation method is to do all you can to make each opportunity more likely to happen. After you've determined what you have to do to get ready to be prepared, 
After you've determined this, see what you can do to expedite the process. What can you do to increase the likelihood of this opportunity? Go over it and over it and over it. Use these three methods again and again as you assess where you are now and where you have to go next to keep moving toward the achievements that are most important to you. Step one, consider your resources. Step two, determine what you have to do to get ready. Step three, expedite the opportunities. And by the way, this method of self-preparation works wherever you are in your journey, whether you're close to your goals or whether you're just starting your journey of self-direction. This method works. Have working knowledge to draw from. Continually work on yourself in preparation of where you want to be. Build a reservoir of thoughts and ideas and philosophies and experiences that are your own. Build, grow, change, get ready, be prepared. Be prepared for a life worth living. Now here are the four ifs that make life worthwhile. Number one, life is worthwhile if you learn. Nothing worse than being stupid. Life is worthwhile if you learn. Learn from your personal experiences. Learn from other people's experiences. Second, life is worthwhile if you try. Now you've got to take what you've learned and see if you can try your hand at it. Someone says, well, you can't try, you have to do. No, you have to try. I put the bar up two feet and ask the kids who can jump two feet. I can, some say, I can't, some say, I don't know, some say. How are you going to know? You don't. You've just got to try. Just back off and run at it. How are you going to know if you don't try? Now, what if you knock the bar down? Does that mean you can't jump two feet? No. You have to what? Try it again. Of course, you have to try. Try it another way, but try. Try your hand at it. When the record book on you is finished, let it show your wins and your losses, but don't let the record book show that you didn't try. Next, life is worthwhile if you stay. You've got to learn to stay. Now, you don't have to stay forever. Just stay till you see it through. A guy builds a foundation and then he wanders off somewhere and builds another foundation. He's got these foundations scattered all across the country. I mean, no walls, no roofs, just a bunch of foundations. Not a good reputation. Stay. You don't have to stay forever. Just stay to finish something. Don't fall into the trap of less than refined sophistication. Stay till it's over. The fourth if that makes life worthwhile, one is if you learn, two is if you try, three is if you stay, and fourth if that makes life worthwhile is if you care. Caring is a unique human experience that is so vital and so powerful and so all-encompassing and so far-reaching. If you care at all, you'll get some results. If you care enough, you can get magnificent.